this is an issue that for quite some time now has needed to be addressed and quite simply as you can see based on the intro you know what issue I'm talking about it's the issue and the notion that men are repairmen no not talking about repairing the broken truck or the leaky faucet or the light bulb not talking about any of that I'm talking about the more uh, metaphysical if you will idea that men are there to repair relations between men and women, to fix the problems that exist, as if there hadn't always been problems to begin with, and that's something I might address later. But to start off uh, this discussion, let me first talk about this in the context of a little uh, bit of history. So in both cases of World War I and World War II, Germany uh, had officially declared war, wage war on other nations. They lost. and they were forced to pay war reparations. War reparations being see, monies, but essentially a form of repair. They were asked to repair the things they had broken. Let me ask you men, what have you broken? Uh, be you old or young, what have you broken? As I mentioned in the previous video, uh, the time for pretense is over. I said quite clearly and demonstrated quite clearly that this war was foisted upon you, it was thrust upon you, it was unwanted. War was declared towards you, not the other way around. And as such, there is no obligation, in any sense of the word, that man or men collectively repair anything between men and women. The obligation simply isn't there. And I, for one, and I hope you, my fellow men going their own way, uh, see that as for what it is, simply uh, a terrible argument that has no base in reality. And I'm going to get into this a bit later, but I'll tell you why we don't, for further reasons why we don't need to repair anything. But more to the point. The other argument you'll hear from tradcons, liberals, MRAs, all sorts of people is that society and civilization need to continue. You need women, i.e. you need their uterus. Sure, that's true. But, uh, that is not exactly an argument it's in and of itself for the repair or reparations that we are supposed to offer women. Why? Because uh, that's simply stating the facts. No one's going to disagree with that. You know, you need two to tango, you need a male and a female to propagate the DNA and keep the civilization going. Uh, on the other hand, we also have... Uh, <laughs> We're clogging up the planet with billions, billions plus of people. More to the point, um, all of these arguments stem from a gynocentric worldview. And let me tell you something, gentlemen. This, uh, the tradcons and PUAs alike, and there are all kinds these days. You get blends of tradcon, PUA, PUA tradcons. I'll tell you, in the days of patriarchy, things were better. But patriarchy, as Barbarossa has very often and very uh, effectively uh, demonstrated, is simply a, another form of gynocracy. It's, uh, patriarchy is speaking in terms of gynospeak. No matter what system we have, uh, it, is, it will essentially and necessarily be gynocentric. That means repairing relations, being repairmen, will only lead to more gynocentrism. It will be more of the same, maybe a slightly different flavor, but it will be the same. The people often ask me, what's the end goal? Well, in the abstract, and the real sense, the end goal is pretty simple. It's a question of critical mass, numbers. Men refusing to buy into the system, into the gy gy gynocentrism of the system in particular, be it uh, liberalism or traditional conservatism or even this idea that, which I will get to later, that disposability is okay as long as you get rewarded for it, which Barbara Russ in his most recent video uh, talked about at length and uh, I think demonstrated quite well that it's uh, a bogus argument. But I'm going to add my own points to that. The question there is, uh, what is the end goal? The end goal, for, at least for me, is it's a numbers game. Eventually, it will happen. 
more and more men will get so disgusted with the system that we will turn our backs on it. And you say, oh, that's a dead end, it's a dead end, you need women. No. Eventually, like all organisms, women will be forced to evolve past their infantile states, and they will be forced to evolve past the gynocentric worldview that uh, has basically enshrined them in the position they are now. They've been deified. Not only have they been deified, uh, they believe in their own deification, they believe in their own divinity. Men believe in it too, as you saw in Barbarossa's most recent video. They believe in it, and they constantly, constantly offer uh, reassurance and repeated affirmation that women are in fact divine, and that their lives are more valuable than men. Well, I'm here to say that's not the case. Eventually, things will get so bad that the so-called Thempocalypse, which Girl Writes What and I have talked about, that though it is her idea uh, in the past, will come. And men will be asked to, quote-unquote, fix things, to repair things. They'll be blamed. But we're not going to do that when that comes. Hopefully not, at least. I certainly won't if I'm still alive. No, nope. we're going to look upon the desolate landscape and say, you waged this war, you created the destruction, you fix it. That simple. And like we've been doing for millennia, millions of years, men competing, finding out what their strengths and weaknesses are, women will be forced to do the same. There will be no men in this scenario to bail them out. They will be forced. They will have no choice to either work to discover their own strengths and weaknesses or they will perish and die. It's that simple. I know that sounds radical, but think about it, gentlemen. That's what we've been doing for millions of years. That's our choice. That's all we have. We can either perish or die, or we can discover our strengths and weaknesses, our talents, and utilize them to the best of our ability. That's the equation for life that we have, and it's not the equation for life that women have. Women, for well, the better part of six million years, in terms of our hominid ancestors, have uh, been essentially <coughs> been given access to a free pass because they possess the golden uterus. Well, it's not enough. It simply is not enough. And all the arguments you hear from PUAs and Tradcons and liberals and MRAs that that is enough to thrust upon the title of divinity and godhood or goddesshood uh, there's no justification for it, not anymore, not with six billion plus people on the planet. We are running around, as I've said many times, h hardware and software that's stuck at best a time period of 20,000 years ago and harks back to time, well, millions and millions of years ago. And I really like the term that Barbarossa used, the thinking man. Thinking men, and I can maintain that all MIGTO are essentially thinking men, realize that it's time for a, par a paradigm shift, it's a time for a change. What do I mean by that? Well, it's been demonstrated, in my opinion at least, ad nauseum, uh, non-stop, to the point of exhaustion, that traditional conservatism, patriarchy, really is a form of gynocentrism. I mentioned this before, Barbara says as well. It enshrines the female in a position of uh, well, infanthood for one, but also in a position of uh, unassailability. Women are not to be touched. They're, 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 to, they're to be appeased no matter what. And of course, at the same time, male disposability is enshrined in, as long as in the phrase, as long as I get rewarded for it, I'm okay with being disposable. Well, let me talk about that. Barbara Russell talks about this in the video. Let me add my own two cents to this. Now, I know many men who think that's okay. I even know MRAs who think that's okay. They say, theoretically, the issue is disposability, but it's really not, not if they're going to make that argument. The issue is not disposability, if I were to translate what they're saying. The issue is men not getting rewarded for disposability. <clears throat> Sound familiar? It should, because that's an argument you'll hear very often. What indeed is that actually saying, though? What are these people actually saying? Well, let me make a little of a bit of an analogy for you here. People and men who say, 
disposability is cool as long as you get rewarded for it, or essentially saying, I'm a steak, I'm a piece of meat, and I'm not cool with it as it stands now because uh, I'm being, uh, basically, I'm being cooked up and fed to people at McDonald's, low, low, poor customers. However, if I, as a piece of meat, as a steak, I'm prepared by the best chefs in the world, and I'm consumed in a high-class restaurant by the uh, wealthiest of patrons, that's okay. What these gentlemen are missing is that, at the end of the day, the steak that you are will still be shat out the asshole of the customer, be it a customer of McDonald's or a high-end restaurant, and you will still be essentially what can only be called the fecal matter, the byproduct. That is what you are. It doesn't matter whether you're prepared by a fancy chef as a steak, and it doesn't matter whether or not the guy who's eating you, or in the case of the woman who's spending the man's money who's eating you, uh, spent a lot of money on the meal, you're still a steak, and you'll still be shat out the asshole. So, that's my point. Uh, disposability is the problem, and men are the only people, the only human beings, that can take it upon themselves to renounce that title. And they can renounce it by turning their backs on a system that hates them, essentially. Uh, men, even men, supposedly in MRIs in some cases, will make the claim that disposability is okay as long as they're rewarded for it. So, none of you'll, on, in no camp, uh, barring a few men going their own way, will you hear an argument that we actually need to fundamentally change the way we perceive the male-female universe. It's all about repairing relations, even though we have no obligation to do so. It's all about game, as this uh, tr PUA troll, who's constantly trolling my videos, mentions. Yeah, you need game, because you need to fix things. I don't want to fix anything, and I know a lot of you don't want to fix anything either. You didn't break anything. You don't need to fix anything. As for the disposability uh, issue, that can only be brought about when things get really, really bad, and we have uh, cards, we have some de uh, chips that we can deal at the table. At the moment, we don't because of the gynocentric worldview that dominates everything. It doesn't matter whether it's liberals or tradcons, MRAs in some cases, it all is essentially a gynocentric worldview. Uh, the idea that if we were just push back the laws and everything would be fine, I've never, I've never said that anything would be fine after we push back the laws. I've never been an advocate for that argument because it's a poor argument. It's uh, at best, it's an argument for going back to the days of so-called patriarchy, gynocentrism, essentially. And in that sense, it's, in, in that sense, it's as fragile as it always would be. And we'd probably see another ushering in of a feminist or feminist type, like uh, movement or uh, political ideology coming about in uh, a very short time after that, relatively speaking. So, yeah, disposability is the issue, but men need to take it upon themselves to individually reject that disposability. It's not going to come from women, and certainly not going to come from other men. Remember, other men hate each other men. H hate other men. We, we hate each other, in the greater sense, because we're constantly competing and vying for the affections of women. Imagine if women were in the equation. We wouldn't do that nearly as much. So the end goal will not be uh, repairing the laws so we can go back to playing house. Uh, the house will implode in itself, give it enough time. It's a temporary solution at best. I think what I'm talking about and what Barbarossa is talking about, though I reluctant to speak for him, but the idea is, generally speaking, is a fundamental switch in our mentalities. And for the first time in history, arguably at least, we're in a position to see things for, for what they are, as they are, and say, I'm not going to be part of that. Circumstances have brought us to where we are right now. Remember, gentlemen, for millions of years, even before the advent of culture and civilization, the worldview was a gynocentric one. For a lot of reasons. Because limiting factor in production, uterus, because men routinely competed against each other and killed each other for the attentions of women. 
I mean, it's it's as simple as a guy like Genghis Khan. You know. This guy is the uh, is the ultimate patriarch, if you will. And uh, but what has he accomplished through violence? He would kill any me conquered men, and he would rape and plunder the women, or in some cases he would take them on willingly. We all know that women like thugs. The point being that this is not a man in a modern sense that we need to admire, uh, even though many do. And the way forward is not going to be to returning to that or, or traditional conservatism. It's certainly not in the in the found in leftist liberalism of today. Uh, it's not going to be found in anything. It's not going to be found in a political system. This is why I buy away from politics. People ask me. Uh, I'm, I'm labeled all kinds of things: leftist, collectivist. Uh, of course, never a right winger. I'm certainly not. But I'm actually none of those things. Sure. If I look uh, further back in my history, I was sort of a card-carrying libertarian. But the more you examine human nature, gender relations, the more you realize that all that political bullshit is peripheral. What really matters is our perceptions and the of the gender equation, how men relate to women and vice versa. It all comes down to sex and reproduction. And that's it's from the bottom up, from that, that sphere of influence that... Uh, or sphere of or area of interest that we can exert our influence. It's not going to be in the realm of politics. Politics is peripheral. It's a sideshow. You know, don't I mean? Don't this? I mean, you can see it. How do we know that it's, it's peripheral and a sideshow? Because all of these people on the left or on the right are essentially, or any, or centrist for that matter. Any any of these political political ideologies, these people spouting uh, pundit points. They're all talking about the same thing. Essentially, they're the many faces of the same coin. Because they're all talking about things from a gynocentric perspective, albeit with slightly different flavors and slightly different approaches to it. Meaning, how do we cater to women? The tradition, the Tradcon says, I'm going to cater to women by uh, offering her my disposability, uh, working for her, um, and giving her money so she'll spread my legs and have my children. The... Uh, the left winger, the liberal person, says, uh, "I don't need to do that. I'm just going to be myself, and the state will take care of them and do everything." And uh, not understand. Uh, at, the, at the very least, the, tr the tradcon in that sense has some sense of what women are actually interested in, not his, not his personhood, but in his labor and in his uh, money, his funds. Uh, the liberal person is, I'd, I'd argue, even further off because he doesn't understand that equation often. At the same time, he white knights and. Uh, kisses up to women on a constant basis, so it's just basically different approaches to the same problem, and none of the pr none of the solutions are particularly uh, androcentric. Uh, they're all gynocentric. An androcentric solution uh, would be what essentially, essentially what we're engaged in here, saying, "Hey, uh, the time has come for a new idea, and that idea is let women stand on their own." I said it before. Things will eventually get so bad that. Things will get things will reach the point where men are, whether they call themselves MGTOW or not, will actively say, "I'm almost had enough of this," and women will come begging for men's help. At that juncture in time, it's going to be essential that men say, "No, we didn't. We didn't make the mess. We didn't break anything. So you need to fix it. You need to do the work." Quite literally, you know, discover yourself. Discover your strengths work to make the world a better place or perish it seems cruel and harsh but that's the only option we have you want true equality like a lot of MREs say that they do well that's what it is that's that's what it that's the equation you now it's 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 you know Barbara's point in his most recent video it's quite brilliant that we all differ in, in as men as individuals in our strengths and our and our weaknesses. I mean, uh, I'm terrible at bench pressing, and always will be. And then there are other guys who are just much better at. It. In fact, I, despite lifting weights for years, I have no genetic affinity for it. There are guys just blow me out of the water. water. Um, I don't get special privileges for, because of that. Uh, you know, all of these. I mean, but yet women. I mean, this is a perfect example, by the way. Women are regarded as weak, physically weak. Uh, you know, because I can't bench press uh, 300 pounds. Am I? Uh, you know. I'm still a guy, though, aren't I? Women, most women can't bench press 300 pounds or 200 pounds, for that matter, either. Um, 
they shouldn't be afforded special privileges because they're, just because they're weaker. As far as intellect is concerned, that's also a very valid point. We all have different intellects. We have our genetic, heritable intellect, and we have the intellect that we uh, build upon throughout our lives. The it's not an argument to I mean how many idiotic men I see on the streets all the time out there in the matrix there are tons of them I mean men as they say in German who is uh, dumb, dumb as bread or dumb as a doornail in English uh, the doorknob they're not afforded special privileges so all these arguments are just bad arguments because we have masses of men who fall into the same category and yet we're not subject to special treatment because of that this is this is the the enduring gynocentric philosophy, and it is part of our very essence. Only the thinking man, effectively the man going his own way, only the thinking man has the ability to turn that around, turn it on his head, because only he can see past his own. And we all have it: gynocentric innate instinct to elevate the female to something more than she actually is. That is, she's a human being with flaws, and weaknesses just as we all have and and strengths but only provided that she look for those strengths to decide what those strengths are some of us spend a lifetime trying to figure out what our strengths are and I, I know I have and yet women are not required to do that they're simply required to exist existence is enough for them it's not enough for men because if we were to simply exist we would all die quite quickly so that's that point, this, this constant need to offer the argument that we need to repair relations. No, we didn't break anything, and we're not fucking fixing anything. It's that simple. We're not fixing something that we did not break. That's not how it works. It's not how it works in every other relation. If women ever want to fix relations, they better look at the past, they better look at the past six million years and learn a lesson from it. And going back to patriarchy, give me a break. We don't need any more gynocentrism. Patriarchy is just gynocentrism. It is men supplicating women and their needs by offering and offering up their disposability to them, like those disgusting conservatives in the in the video Barbarossa. But you know, liberals are just as bad. Like I said, many many different sides of the same coin. They're all the same. The name of the game is gynocentrism. It always was and likely always will be unless enough thinking men can reach critical mass. We need to reach that point in order to actually change things. That's what's going on. Now, on the point uh, of uh, this particular PUA troll or many others, uh, this is a somewhat separate issue, though I do want to address it, this idea that because First off, let me just say, uh, I actually have no problem PA, PUAs per se. And if you want to spend most of your time uh, chasing pussy, feel free to do it. I'm not going to stop you. I'm also not going to even tell you to stop. Just do whatever you want. My issue is with PUAs saying, that's what you need to do. You need to up your game. Uh, I know it's bizarre to PUAs, but I derive my pleasure from other things, from intellectual pursuits, from reading, from gaming. Uh, from simply thinking about complex issues. And all of that is far more rewarding to me than chasing pussy ever was and ever will be. And if you don't get that, that's simply because you're wired differently. And that's fine, but don't go along and tell me and the rest of the men go on their own way that we need to start chasing pussy and up our game as well because we're just not interested in it. We're not interested in vaulting through endless hoops and trying to get women to appease them. And I mean, the PUAs... And by the very definition of the word, I mean, they're, they're, they're pussy chasers. I don't have a problem with that per se. The problem arises when uh, they try to thrust and force their beliefs onto other people. Now, um, I'm not going to talk that much more about PUAs, just, uh, but Barbara Russell, a while back, and I'll post a link, made an excellent video basically refuting virtually all of PUA's nonsense. If you haven't seen it, I strongly suggest you watch it. It's, I mean, it's hard to say. It's one of, he has so many amazing videos, but it's certainly, with regards to PUA's and their nonsense, one of his best. And uh, I'll put that in the link bar uh, below. But to, re, uh, to recap, that's basically where we are. I mean, we're stuck in a system that just refuses to take off the chains of gynocentrism 
and to say and, and look at it at a different perspective. For the first time in history, thinking men have the ability to move past that. Uh, and we all realize, anyone who's a thinking man, that simply saying, fixing the laws and changing this and that, uh, that's, well, the analogy there would be, say, the, the cancer patient uh, or the, the, the very the terribly ill patient or whatever, the guy in the hospital. I mean, you can, you can give him maybe painkillers and you can fix up this and that, but the cancer is still eating him from within and destroying him slowly, and he will die from it. So fixing the laws is simply uh, putting band-aids on a cancer patient. It's not going to do anything. It will never do anything. Uh, it might personally help hold women's behavior in check, but believe me, it's inevitable. The next, w the next wave of feminism, or whatever it's called, will uh, rear its ugly head. And why? Because what we don't like to talk about openly, feminism uh, does not exist without women. And women have a innate capacity for... It's the as Barbarossa said, it's the vector for the virus, for absorbing it and propelling it through the time-space continuum. So you know, maybe it would happen 100 or 200 years from now, but the fact is it would come back. And it's not enough to simply hold feminism and fe a negative female behavior in check. We need to fundamentally rewrite everything. And it cannot be based on pussy begging. I mean, if you want to chase pussy all day, that's fine. Be you a trad con, a liberal, or whatever. If you want to uh, do that, I don't have a problem with that per se, but don't try to offer insight and claim that it's some way forward, returning to the ways of yore, because it's not. We've seen it fail, it will fail again. There are very concrete reason, reasons that it failed. Uh, it's been pointed out numerous times as to why it failed. Uh, patriarchy is gynocentric, maintains uh, fem females in a uh, state of perpetual state of infancy. And well, the liberal version, of course, is uh, the guy. You know, da daddy is the state, and you know, it's, it's the same thing. It's just like I said, many sides of the same coin. So we need to stop listening to that. Uh, it, they, they offer no insights, repeating the same arguments over and and over and over, just because it, allegedly it worked for a time. Lots of things worked for a time, and then they didn't work anymore. I mean, monarchical systems worked for a time too. At some point in time, people thought, mm, I don't really want a king anymore, so let's get rid of that. Uh, it wasn't sustainable, and we really need to fundamentally rewrite everything. It's a question of critical mass and numbers. If we get the numbers, if we reach that critical mass, we can change things. And I think it ultimately is a question of time. It's a question of time, and maybe it'll happen in the not-too-distant future. Men are getting fed up. They're getting so fed up, they're turning their backs on it, and it's their right to do so, and it's perfectly justified. I'm not here to fix anything, and neither are you. You're not obligated to fix anything unless you've broken it. Can you honestly say you've broken anything? And it is important to remember that the there's an element of culpability in the sense that men enabled it. Man-woman myth, now famously once said, <clears throat> what women want, men want. Right? The prevailing world worldview of women is gynocentric, and the prevailing worldview of men is gynocentric. I Meaning, whatever women want, men will give it to them. Uh, if women want traditionalism, they give it to them. If women want liberal liberalism, that dad, uh, daddy is the state, they give it to them. The, whatever they want, they give it to them. So yes, men essentially fold it up and just let them have it. Um, because they were so used to doing it in their own tradition, in their own traditional uh, conservative circles, they used to give it what give the women what they wanted in that, which was you know endless resources, a life of leisure and luxury, and very very little hardship. Uh, when women decided they wanted something else, they gave it to them. These were the same guys who were running the tradcon business for the longest time. Remember, they didn't become liberals overnight. They said, in fact, these terms are, are almost ambiguous here, as they sort of meld into each other. You have these, these, these so-called trad cons morphing into so-called liberals. None of this has any meaning. There's only, there's only one state religion, there's only one uh, political ideology, and that's the ideology and state religion of gynocentrism. It's the religion of mankind. Uh, it's the religion of men and women. It's all gynocentric. Uh, every, every major monotheist religion uh, offers so-called authority to men so they can please the woman, essentially. That's what it comes down to. So the only way forward is critical mass and letting women 
stand on their own, perish or die. That's the only way forward. Uh, we're not here to fix anything we didn't break. I can't say that often enough. We're done trying to fix things. Uh, and to be perfectly honest, I'll repeat my analogy. If you want to be a steak, you know, that's eaten in a fine restaurant, I think that makes a difference when you're the fecal matter ultimately that comes out of the ass of the, of the buyer. No matter uh, if that buyer is from McDonald's or a high-end restaurant, you know, be my guest. But don't pretend that it fixes anything. And don't pretend that disposability is not an issue, uh, because it is. And don't that then don't say that you know, disposability is the issue, and the way you deal with it is changing the laws, because then men are less disposable. They're not. Disposability light, I once said. That's all it is. And if you're okay with that, fine. But I'm not, and a lot of other men are not, and we're tired of it. And we're not going to fix anything. The only way forward is to fundamentally rethink anything and everything that we've always thought. And since the dawn of time, our religion, our God, our deity, our belief has been gynocentrism. Women. Women, women, women. Fixing things with women, doing what women want, it's all the same thing. And I'm quite tired of it. And I think you are too. We're tired of hearing this bullshit. It's the same washed-up, repetitious nonsense we've been hearing since, since uh, for years now from trad cons. Uh, liberals, uh, tr trad cons say, I mean, there's a problem, but if we go back to traditional careers, everything will be fixed. Liberals don't even think there's a problem, um, but there are, like I said, many sides of the same coin. Not even just two sides. I mean, there's so many different elements, but they're all they're all following the religion of gynocentrism. To move forward effectively we need to become apostates i am an apostate you are an apostate barbaros is an apostate we have renounced the religion of gynocentrism and we're moving forward we are we will find our new god and the new god if i am very reluctant to even use the term will be one of individualism it will be of rugged individualism in the sense that uh, women will be forced to fend for themselves like men always have and men hopefully will have a new sense of compassion, a new sense of, well, manhood, if you will, towards their fellow men. We will extend friendship to men who are worthy of it, and we will not despise men who, in, an, in, a, in a, a different age, might have fallen to the category of, as, of undesirable by the female. You know? We're just men. I've said this before, I'll say it again. We're just men. That's the way forward. Anyway, I've ranted a bit uh, for now, and uh, I think I'll leave it at that. But this issue certainly needs to be addressed. You don't fix things, you don't break. And uh, the PUA nonsense, whatever it is, trad con it's all the same thing, remember? All the same thing, don't forget that. So, effectively, men go in their own way are thinking men. And that's the key to the future. If we really want to change things fundamentally, now, the question is whether it's doable or not. I'm amenable to argument on that. On you know, maybe it's not, but at the very least, we understand that we are apostates, and we have uh, moved away from the state, and for that matter, the religion of mankind or humanity, namely the religion of gynocentrism. We're done with it. Thanks for watching.